the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 14th day of this conference, Grace and Favor Conference. I read from Luke chapter 16 verses 10 to 11. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little would also be dishonest with much. If you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? We pray for God's mercy to aid us so that we can be persons of integrity. We pray that the Spirit of the living God would place in our spirits the spirit of integrity. So you have strategically prayed and you are consistent with prayer. You have aligned yourself with covenants that God has made with people or systems that carry grace and favor. You are trying to obey the precepts of God. You have recognized the anointing of your king makers. You have tapped into it. You try to show honor to God and you try to show honor to men. What's next? The next thing you need to do is to be a person of integrity and that is the fourth principle to activating favor and grace in your life. Be a person of integrity. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 3 to 6 will say, Never let go of loyalty, integrity and faithfulness. Bind them around your neck, write them on a tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and men. Loyalty, integrity, faithfulness. Bind them around your neck and write them on a tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of both God and men. My dear friends, I'm about to make a statement, okay? Now, I'm not in any way proposing that God is a businessman who does buying and selling, far from that. But because of my lack of vocabulary to express this mystery, permit me to use the concept of currencies to make a point. It is not the best example, but just for explanation purposes. Now, according to the laws of spiritual transportation, I mean, someday we would have to run a conference on spiritual transportation. According to the laws of spiritual transportation, if money is the only thing you use to get things in this life, then you are truly poor. If money is the only currency you use to get things in this life, then you are truly poor. There are 13 currencies aside money. 13 other currencies aside money that you can use to get realities in this kingdom. Prayer and fasting is a currency. A renewed mind is another currency. Generosity and kindness is another currency. Obeying the precept of God is another currency. Aligning yourself with the covenant that God has with specific persons or institutions is another currency. Honor to God and honor to man is another currency. Anointing and impartation is another currency. Integrity, what we are talking about today, is another currency. Praise and thanksgiving is another currency. The blood, the precious blood of Jesus, is another currency. Relationships and networking is another currency. Kingmakers anointing is another currency. All these are currencies that you can use to transact business in the spiritual realms. So, which of these currencies do you use to pay for what you want? If you understand these systems that I just mentioned, you will use money minimally because what money can buy, these other systems can buy far more. And all of the above mentioned belong to a dimension of the mystery of spiritual transportation. So let's focus on one of the currencies for today, integrity. And that is what Proverbs chapter 3 verses 3 to 6 is saying that never let go of loyalty, Never let go of integrity. Never let go of faithfulness. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and men. What is integrity? 
In mathematics, a whole number is called an integer. And when they say a number is an integer, it means nothing is missing. The number is totally complete. It is a whole number. It is not three-fourths or half. It is not fraction. It is a whole number. So, integer. Integrity. They are from the same root word. So, integrity in Hebrew is used about 30 times in the Bible. And the word refers to singleness or unity or wholeness. So we are talking about that singleness or unity between what you say and what you do. So it is it is a wholeness of purpose, total honesty, and, and a kind of blameless approach to life. It is the opposite of unfaithful or unreliable people or people who say one thing and do the other. So there is no discrepancy between a person of integrity or there is no discrepancy between what a person of integrity appears to be on the outside and who he is on the inside. There is no discrepancy. In other words, there is no duplicity in his life. So, it is, it is the kind of living so that what you live is in consonance with what you say. Now, this does not mean that People of integrity are perfect. People of integrity can sin, they can fall, they can make mistakes, but they are quick to admit their mistakes. They get up and they keep going. But you see, if you want to walk in integrity, it is costly. Of course, integrity will bring you protection from God, it will bring you graces and favors, but it doesn't mean that you would have an easy road in this corrupt world because blood testament hates people of integrity and they will seek to kill you proverbs chapter 29 verse 10 would say so so that is the warning that if you decide to live according to integrity not everybody will like the way you are living because the world system is dark and corrupt and evil and and when you walk in integrity you become a challenge to the to the majority and you pay the price if you want to live a life of integrity. It, you may even have to pay a huge price. It, it, it may cost you a lot in the interim, but eventually, integrity pays off. So integrity. How many of us are willing to lose our souls just to make a little more money? Integrity. Integrity. How many of us are willing to tell a lie just so that we can secure a deal? integrity how many of us are living fake lives how many of us are not keeping to fidelity in marriage and relationships how many of us are deceptive concealing the truth lying cheating people left right integrity how many times have we made promises and failed made commitments and didn't keep our end of the deal integrity are we people of integrity and integrity is is important in every aspect of our lives and you see, we begin to go down a very slippery path, one small choice at a time, when we do not practice integrity. And hear me when I tell you that God is looking for men and women of integrity to grant favor and grace to. God is looking for men and women of integrity. Multi-million companies are looking for men and women of integrity. People of integrity are so scarce that the world is actually looking for men and women of integrity are you a person of integrity integrity is a big key to assess grace and favor a quality that we seldom have so jesus will say if we cannot trust you with small things who will trust you with bigger stuff who will look at the system verse 10 to 11 who will if you cannot trust you with with worldly wealth who can trust you with the true riches of heaven some of you, God cannot trust you. That is why you are still where you are. And until we, until we try to become people of integrity, we should forget about walking in the full dimensions of grace and favor. As a people, we are bending. We are too bending. We, we justify it. And, and many of us, the lifespan of our values are very small. At the presence of every significant challenge, we bend to everything. We are too bending. Look, we must be men and women of integrity, you integrity in business integrity in your work with god integrity in family life integrity in relationships see 
if, if you are pretending to be something that you are not time will expose you you can't fake a thing for a long time they say character is like pregnancy it's just a matter of time it will show for everybody to see falsehood was not designed to stay for long it was designed to fail and that's why we call it falsehood do you have integrity and the proof of integrity is consistency in the face of opportunities that that if you bend it can be to your advantage yet you refuse to bend so can you call yourself a man or woman of integrity look some of these things i'm sharing with you it is the holy spirit that is ministering to us and we are seeing the areas in our lives that needs correction are you a person of integrity greater grace wants to come upon your life greater grace wants to come upon your life so take these things i'm telling you seriously i pray for you and for myself that god will make us people of integrity of course integrity is not perfection integrity is unwavering fortitude to remain consistent regardless of the shame it brings you are consistent you do something wrong you don't explain it you you, you come out you come clean i'm sorry i did it out of pressure i accept responsibility if there is any punishment i receive it gladly integrity integrity is like the virtuous woman who can find do we have people that can remain consistent regardless of the consequences we we bend too much in this country we bend too much in our world and and god must grant us grace so proverbs chapter 20 verse 7 will say the righteous who walks in integrity his children are blessed after him so give yourself a good name oh it is better than money your reputation your very reputation can be a key or padlock to your children and your associates there are people whose names are mentioned today and no one wants to help their descendants there are people there are other people whose names are mentioned and everyone wants to come to their help your father had the opportunity to steal in government in that company but he didn't you are witnesses to that come and manage this company branch integrity so let us learn to think and assess issues transgenerationally because once your name has been tarnished it is not easy to regain your credibility and it is integrity that will open doors for you. It will make favor locate you and abundant grace will begin to work in your life. We pray that there will be people of integrity. Have a prayerful day. Shalom. And God bless you.